Hi guys, welcome back to Nebula Fox Star Reviews. Today we're going back to the wonderful world of Jurassic World. And heading a little bit back because I'm a little bit late to the party with reviewing these ones. As I'm usually late to the party with reviewing anything Jurassic World. And we're looking at the um, final wave of the Dino Trekkers. Danger packs were they called? Basically like the attack pack figures. So we've got the blue and yellow Pyroraptor to look at. We've got the Borealopelta to look at. Um, we've got the deserty sandy coloured Velociraptor to take a look at. And finally we've got, I dropped them. I dropped it again. Can't grab anything with these freaking paws. There we go. It's a little back to front at the moment. But we also have the Ornithocyrus to take a look at. This one is the one that's been eluding quite a lot of people. I do believe this is the harder one to find for this wave. Because for this specific wave, it's the only new species. So, yeah. Four cool looking little Jurassic World figures. So let's head on over to the table and get a closer look at them, shall we? Okay, so... Here are all the figures. These are indeed the Dino Trekkers Danger Pack, uh, the final wave of them. I did quickly double check before filming the introduction part and filming this bit. But yeah, so we have the four species here, the Onothocyrus, Velociraptor, Borealopelta, and the uh, Pyroraptor. I had to think then. So we'll take a look at the Velociraptor first, just because he's... That's the less interesting one because we've had like a million Velociraptors. Now, I actually really like this Velociraptor figure. I like the colours. It's the same as all of the new style basic Velociraptors since Dominion came out. So it's in the same pose, same sculpt and everything. But I just really like the colour. The eyes on mine have been printed really nicely. Um, the, the jaw's a bit loose on mine and it can't close all the way, but I don't mind. So we've got this weird off cream, greeny colour. I don't know how you'd, what you'd describe this. So that's running through pretty much all of the body. And then we have this grey colour that's running from the lower jaw down to the legs. And that is it. No painted claws, but I don't mind. It is still a really cool little figure. So, for articulation, as you saw, the mouth can open and close. The head can go down that far and can go up that far. Can do a full 360. The arms are just on the uh, just on pegs, so they just go forwards and backwards. Same with the legs. They go forwards and backwards as well. The tail has that pointless rotational point, but it, it, it is honestly extremely pointless. And we have the scan code as well, oh, which is actually starting to peel off on mine. Get back up there. Get back in there, scan code. There we go. So there's the scan code of this uh, custard raptor. I'll call it the custard raptor. So that's the raptor out the way. Up next, we will look at the Borealopelta. Now, I believe this is the second time this figure has been in the line. Um, the first time being in an earlier wave of the Danger Pack. So this one is literally just a repack, but I never got it the first time. So I thought it was best I get it this time. Really nice. This is extremely spiky you would not want to mess with this guy if you bumped into him on a street but he is really nice i love the detail on him look at all these spikes lots of spikes around the neck and then you've got the shoulder spikes as well just the armor plating that is typical of nodosaurs and ankylosaurs and then you've got more spikes coming down towards the tail in place of a club so this guy is not to be messed with Eye paint uh, seems to be good on both sides. Yeah, eye paint seems to be alright. 
it is good there is just a speckling of this um peachy skin color -y tone the rest of it is orange going into a brown and then the brown is on the back with gray for the spikes for articulation the head can go down that far and can go up that far the legs are just on the pegs so they can just go back and forth both front and back and the tail has the pointless articulation which is even more pointless with this one because you're definitely breaking the uh, mold for that one so we've got the scan code as usual so there's the scan code for the Borealis pelter I swear if this isn't a Borealis pelter I'm pretty sure it was on the box so yep yeah, scan code for that guy I didn't keep the packaging for these I got these ones for Christmas all of this wave and I've only now got round to reviewing them so the boxes are long gone. Moving on to the Pyroraptor, which is actually one of the figures I was really looking forward to with this wave. Because yes, it's just a repaint, but I really like the Pyroraptor figure. It's one of my favourite figures that was released for Dominion. So I was happy getting, you know, a colour variant rather than just the red and grey ones that we got for Dominion. So we've got a nice black head and that is that's it for black so black head with some white markings the eyes are painted okay on this one they're not perfect but they will do they are okay the teeth have been painted right you know pretty nicely they are just one solid piece but they have been painted nicely there's no sloppiness to it We've got the inside of the mouth painted really well as well. Set the roof of the mouth, that's never painted. That is blue. That is just the blue plastic. So then we've got the rest of, it's all been moulded in the blue, except the legs that are moulded in the yellow. But then we've got some yellow paint for the belly and these markings on here. So, yep, yeah. once again, no toe claws. Um, no claws painted on the hands or the feet. The feet are nice and big, so this can stand really well. And it's also slightly webbed. So if I bring the Velociraptor back in, which has nice... Oh, also has slightly webbed feet for the Velociraptor. But as you can see, the Raptor has nice slim feet. And the Pyroraptor has quite chunky feet. So I do like that they've, um, they're showing the difference there. Because as we know in the film, the Pyroraptor had fatter feet to sort of support it while it walked on the ice. But overall, just really nice. I like this guy a lot. The feathering on him is really nice. They could have done the, you know, the arm feathers a lot bigger because, you know, in the film it had pretty much fully formed wing feathers. So these could have been done bigger, but I'm not bothered. For this one, it sort of works. And for articulation, the mouth can open and close. That's as far wide as the mouth can go. My camera is focusing really weird. There we go. The head can go down that far, up that far, so it can look all the way up. It's also on a swivel. The swivel on mine is really damn loose. So it's, it's, it's a really loose swivel, but I'm not bothered. As long as this hinge doesn't get loose, I'm not fussed. The arms can go backwards and forwards. Not so much backwards. I mean, that's the neutral, and that's as far back as it's wanting to go on mine, both sides. And then forwards is like that, so we can either go... And we can go... Hmm. I'll just keep the arms there. Legs can go eh, forwards and backwards. They're a bit stiff on mine. And the tail has the pointless rotation. Meh. Overall, really happy with this Pyroraptor. When I saw the initial um, promo shots for it, you know, when they did like the digital renders, I was not keen on the colour scheme. 
but it's grown on me because this is like a golden macaw blue and yellow macaw uh, color scheme so it's it's grown on me the fact that they've used an actual um a real animal for the color scheme on this is pretty cool so you go over there and finally we have the ornithochirus this is the one that eludes a lot of people i do believe by now it's a lot easier to get hold of um but at the time when this wave first came out the ornithocaris was pretty difficult to find and it's oh wait hold on hit i forgot about that scan code for the pyroraptor okay moving on back to this guy i only remembered that when i saw the um the hatch on its back this guy is really cool i just wish it could actually stand because every pterosaur mattel have given us it's basically been in a flight pose which is great if you have like fishing wire and lots of hooks and you can hang them from the ceiling but for me who only has shelf space basically it's not great because I, I can't really display it like that can i if we bring the legs down there we go yeah i can't really display it like that so all of my pterosaurs are sort of in a box <laughs> they're not on display apart from my hammond my hammond and my amber collection ones because they came with stands but anyway i love this red on the beak it's quite a striking red color and also the red around the eyes which i will say the eyes are printed pretty nicely really well on this one so i will say 10 out of 10 on the eye paint the mouth I and mean, the roof of the mouth hasn't been painted as usual but the inside of the mouth uh, the tongue and the lower jaw have been painted nicely it's all just the one color i love the red it's very very shiny as well it's like got a metallic sheen to it same with like the upper part of the beak and that's got like a metallic sheen as well I like that then going down to the wings it's all molded in this gray plastic but we have like a darker gray going on the wings going into an orange and that's it it's the same on the other wing underside has no color at all so they're obviously expecting you to sort of just put this on a shelf and have this bit against the floor which i mean if you do it move the head down I guess you could display it like that that could work but eh. the wings on mine are very loose i do believe that's just from it being um stored away until now the wings are pretty loose but i don't mind for articulation the beak can open really wide in fact further than what that looks normal so i would say that is as wide as it should naturally go head is on a swivel hinge so it can go all the way around can go up that far and can go down uh, that far wings are also on swivel hinges so they can go up about that and down well pretty much all the way down not all the way up but all the way down and you can also swivel them around it's the swivel part that's more loose on mine once again but then the legs are on uh swivels as well they're just on the hinges and they can only go up and down they're joined together as well and the final scan code is there for you so this is the scan code for the ornithocyrus i apologize if this one if your camera might not like this one because it's in the dark but with it being this trapdoor i can't really do anything about it i'm sorry so that's just going to be the scan code and yeah that's all i can really say about these figures let's bring them all back in and i got the raptor and the other raptor there we go so that was it this is the final wave i believe of the dino trackers danger packs because we are now into epic evolution 
I don't believe Dino Track has actually lasted that long. It seemed like a very short-lived set. But I'm still happy with what we got. I like them. They're cool. Really like the Pyroraptor. Really like the owner of the Kairos. And really like the Raptor. Not that fussed about the Borealis Pelter, but it was nice to have a new herbivore. Anyway, that will that is that. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I shall see you all in the next video. Whatever that'll be. Bye!